This video is brought to you by the WD-40 Company. When you're setting up your vehicle for off-road adventures, there's a lot of things to consider bringing along with you. This is a list of eight things that I find to be highly essential. These are things that I bring with me on every adventure, and in fact, they're things that never leave my vehicle, unless I'm using them. Since this is only eight things, I'm not gonna rate this as a you know one to eight kind of hierarchy. This is just eight things that you should absolutely have with you. There's, like I said, more than eight things that you should have along and uh, really shouldn't hit the trail without. However, these are the top eight that I find uh, really are things that most beginners and even a lot of people that have been going out you know, sporadically for years, they forget to bring along with them or they just think they're not gonna need. One of those things here is a jack, which is capable of lifting your vehicle if it's been lifted. A lot of people leave the factory jack in there thinking, you know, I've got a jack to change a spare tire. Well, sure, that works if you're on the side of the road. However, the little base on this factory XJ jack is just gonna push right into any dirt or soft surface. So if you're on sand or dirt, anything loose and soft, forget it, this is not gonna be stable, it's not gonna be safe, it may not even get the job done at all. This is a high lift off-road base. It works for the high lift, of course, which I do also carry. I recommend having a off-road jack like that. However, this is just your basic vehicle jack that comes in an XJ. I don't like the scissor jacks. I feel like you know you get those twisted just a little bit and they can collapse really easily. These are pretty sturdy until you get them up, you know, kind of further than they should be anyway. And uh, they're easy to operate. They go underneath your axle tube. This is not something you'd ever try to lift all the way up to your rocker, but this is perfect for just getting a tire off enough uh, to be able to change it easily. So I do prefer these. I've also found a lot of other uses for these. Along with that jack, I highly recommend having a full size, meaning a matched size spare tire. If it can be the same brand and one that you rotate in with your tires, even better. But if you just have a donut spare or no spare at all, that's just asking for some sort of trouble. You may even find some uses for a spare tire that aren't putting it on your vehicle in place of a tire with a flat. But if you're not able to carry a spare, maybe you're running a large enough tire that you don't really have a spot for it and you don't want all that extra weight, what you wanna do is replace the option of a spare tire with an adequate tire patch kit and an air compressor that's capable of airing up your tires to the PSI that you need. Back to talking about a jack, one of the reasons that I carry a high lift is the ability to unseat a bead if you needed to replace a valve stem. Uh, you can probably see from there, this valve stem is actually crushed a little bit, and that's why this is on my spare right now, because I just haven't taken the time to swap it out, but I can't get the valve core out of this very easily. Uh, and if I do, it might not go back in. So you can use the high lift off of your bumper or somewhere else to push on the tire bead enough around it to unseat it pretty easily. So uh, not really gonna be able to do that with a standard vehicle jack, I don't think. And uh, just another reason to consider something like a high lift. Another item I always have with me is WD-40's multi-use product. I prefer it in the can with the easy reach flexible straw because it just allows you to get WD-40 into some places that you just can't get with the regular you know, red straw style. And uh, you can also always spray it the normal fan spray as well. But the multi-use product is great for breaking a bolt loose or maybe you have a stuck hood latch or just a squeaky hinge somewhere and it's driving you nuts. You can take care of it with the multi-use product and uh, it's always good to have that along with you on the trail. Another item I find to be super useful, whether you're doing a trail side repair, setting up camp, or just looking for something in your vehicle that uh, might be hiding in a dark space, whether it be day or night, a headlamp. You, know, you can obviously hold this like a flashlight. I carry other flashlights as well. Magnetic bases are really nice on flashlights for being able to stick it somewhere that you can do some work hands-free. But you can also always put this on your head and uh, be able to use it like it's intended. Uh, this particular one is USB rechargeable. It has a spotlight, which is incredibly bright. And it has, uh, there's two dimming settings to the spotlight and the same for the regular light. It also has a red light if you're doing some nighttime photography or just trying to get around a camping area without disturbing people with a really bright flashy light. So that's uh, always in my vehicle. I actually just put this on the headrest. Another top thing that I just feel like so many people go without, uh, they should really be <laughs> put in from the manufacturer. Uh, 
And that's not to say that uh, Jeeps catch on fire a lot, but anything, when you're driving through tall grass or you're working with a fluid that might spill onto something hot, it's so easy to catch a fire. So fire extinguisher is a, a real top thing to bring along with you. Make sure it's charged, make sure that it's in date and that it hasn't been used a few times. If you use it at all, just go ahead and replace it. This particular one is uh, rated to do to trash, flammable liquids, and electrical. So uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be vehicle specific as far as I am uh, concerned, but it does need to be able to handle things that you're gonna find on a vehicle. So fire extinguisher, make sure it's charged and ready to go. Make sure it's easy to access and not you know stuffed under a seat or buried under your cargo. I know you're eyeing this up, but we're gonna get to that in a second. A couple other things, and one of these things that you're gonna find in your toolkit is gonna to be tie downs. So uh, uh, ratchet straps, something that's rated for a decent amount of weight, not like a uh, you know really chintzy strap or a uh, you know those cam lever ones that you just kind of cinch down. Uh, you don't want that kind of thing. You want an actual ratchet strap. This is something that you can of course use to tie down a load. You could use it to hold a door closed if there was some kind of rollover. You could actually have seen them used a lot of times to uh, hold together suspension components or steering components if something breaks on the trail, just a way to get you off the trail. In your toolkit, one of the things that I recommend having is a lug wrench. Certainly something that's capable of breaking lugs free and putting them back on to, to, to a good torque spec. The factory one is great because it works with the factory jack I showed you. It has enough of a leverage here that you could, you could also get a pipe on this or something if you needed. And it functions as a pry bar. So it um, can be tough to find space for a pry bar in your toolkit. If you have this lug wrench like this, you've already got it. Let's talk about the toolkit. So this is a, a kit that I've kind of been building over the years and there's probably more in here than I really need if I were to really go back through it. Uh, but let me just talk about the top things to have in a toolkit. A mini sledge or BFH is uh, very useful to have if you, you know, have a rollover, you bend a body panel, something's cutting into your tire, or you need to straighten out something like a tie rod. BFH is going to be your friend on that. I'm not even going to open this compartment. This is all sockets and ratchets. Make sure that you have at least the most common ones. Uh, on most Jeeps, the uh, common sockets are going to be 10. Have a couple of those. 13, 15, 17, 18, uh, and then as far as standard, 7 sixteenths up to 3 quarter is uh, definitely the minimum number of wrenches that you want to have kind of in through that and, and wrenches and sockets. Let's open up this panel here because in this we've got more tie downs. Always got to have some zip ties, some bailing twine or rope. It could also use paracord, uh, a little bit of wire, wire that's going to be, you know, this isn't heavy rated wire, but it's heavy enough to be able to run an electric fan or a, uh, a light if needed. So make sure you have some wire. Also fuses, a particular type of fuses that your vehicle uses. Mine, uh, since I've added some things, uses both the standard size and the mini fuses. Good to have some electrical tape, some black RTV if you need to seal a diff cover or something. Wrenches, these are uh, combo wrenches, so open end, box wrench. These are the ratchet style. I have a spare set of those that I keep with me. Uh, again, kind of, I think these go three eighths up to three quarter. Adding to the, the kit over here, I would certainly recommend having a adjustable wrench. Uh, if you could really only bring a couple tools with you, adjustable wrench, a set of vice grips. Uh, you don't need really multiple sizes of adjustable wrenches, but it's, uh, it's certainly good to have at least two things that you can use to, to grab things. Vice grips are handy if you get, get to a nut that you can't you know, have a hand on each side. Uh, pliers that have some kind of wire cutter or stripper to them. He says, oh, these are uh, gonna be capable of stripping a wire. That's certainly uh, handy to have. 
I also uh, can't tell you the number of times that I've wished I had a particular Allen wrench with me when I didn't have these along. So have a set of Allen wrenches. They take up so minimal space. Make sure that it's a full set and uh, you won't be wanting for Allen wrenches on anything. Now you can always just think through like your last half a dozen repairs that you've done to your vehicle to really think about the, the type of tools that would have absolutely been required for that job. And uh, really, when you think about it, it's not that many tools. We kind of get spoiled with a lot of uh, particular tools for different jobs that, you know, yeah, they're really handy. They make the job faster. But when you're broken down on the side of the trail and it's just you and a buddy and, you know, you've, you're relying on the tools that you have, it's not about getting it done fast. It's about getting it done and, and getting it working again. So also because I'm sure somebody's going to ask, this is a tool roll, which I really love the tool roll aspect of this. These pouches are Velcro and removable. And this is made by Blue Ridge Overland Gear. Spill kit. So every vehicle that's going off road should have a spill kit with them. It's just environmentally responsible. It's also just smart. You know, you don't want to leave a huge mess. You don't want to have a huge mess on your hands. So this is really pretty basic. This is something that I've actually put together more recently. And uh, there's just a couple items in here that I find to be really key. So you've got these pig mats. These are super absorbent oil or any fluids kind of uh, Matt, you could throw this in an engine bay if you know you're going to crack a brake line or a transmission line or something. Those are great for that. Oil dry or kitty litter. This stuff, you can buy a whole bag of it for like five bucks. Put it in some quart Ziploc bags here for uh, easier storage. I carry two of those. So, you know, if you broke a, uh, a differential cover open or something or you had to you know, drain some gasoline, put some of that in there. Two sets of nitrile gloves some shop towels. These are just your basic blue shop towel that you buy at Walmart or whatever. These have a multitude of uses, of course, you know, cleaning your hands, cleaning up spills, going to the bathroom. Make sure you have some of those along with you. Spill kit's a perfect place to keep them, but you could also keep them elsewhere. I just crush them down flat. You know, this is like a half a roll that I started out with. Crush the, the tube flat so it's not taking up needless space. And that's good to go. Two contractor grade trash bags. Those are just the heavy black trash bags, like 42 gallon or something. And uh, also like to just have a clean cloth rag as well. Maybe you get a runny nose, bloody nose. You just need to keep something on hand to keep your hands clean as you're working. You don't want to dirty up a, a ton of disposable towels. That's perfect. But as you see, that whole kit fits into just this little like fanny pack size pouch. So it's kind of the perfect little uh, kit to have on you doesn't weigh much doesn't cost much yeah this whole thing maybe fifteen dollars another handy tip with little kits like this is uh, I don't have one for this yet but just put a little card like a little three by five card in here maybe laminate it and uh, explain the contents of this kit I'm gonna write spill kit on this for myself so that if somebody else were to need it, I can just be like, grab my spill kit out of the Jeep and uh, they can find it or I can say, you know, it's in the back, it's Velcroed to the side or it's strapped down or it's with my tool kit. They can find spill kit and they can also look at it and see what's supposed to be in there. Those are my eight things, but I'd love to know what are your eight essential items? You can leave a comment below to let me know. And if you like this video, chances are you're going to love these videos as well.